Okay, I just turned the lights up so you could see what I was doing. Um, you see I've got a, a D700 propped up here and I've got a strip of LED lights um, which is adjustable to any color. I'm able to increase or decrease the density. $25 any hardware store. You can see I have the LEDs over here. Now what I did was a two part. Now this is a really crude setup. It took me five minutes to set this up. I wanted to show you that you can take professional photographs that will blow your mind that you will make want to make a 20 by 30 poster out of if you know about light manipulation. What defines a professional photographer is not only skills and composition but also light manipulation. Now is this a pretty crude setup? It sure is. Now was I able to get some awesome results out of it? Sure, five minute setup. So imagine what you could do with a 20 minute setup. Okay, here I have my LEDs behind there. I can change them to any color. I can increase the intensity. Okay, and also, what makes you think you have to have a flash or strobe? When you're using time exposure, what I have here is just a, uh, I've got more than a few of these Surefire. I'm actually able to flash my subject just by pressing the back of the button. What I did on my Nikon D750 is I did a four second time exposure. You experiment around with your depth of field. First you're going to take a shot with just the LEDs and you're going to see, well that's the exposure I need for my LEDs. I need say four seconds at f11. Remember a lower ISO is better because it gives you a larger Remember, Your camera is a time machine. The lower you set your ISO, the better on a time exposure in many cases because it means it gives you a longer exposure to manipulate how the final shot looks. All I did was I exposed this for four seconds and then I actually flashed my shot where I wanted to or actually I did some experimentation with actually strobing, just sweeping the shot like this. So what is the ultimate result out of my D750? Let me turn the lights off so you can see. And then the other lights off. Here you can see the LEDs behind the Nikon D750. Okay. And let's scroll through some of the shots. That was a bad one. Okay, see there's what I was experimenting on the exposure I needed for that. And let me come back here since you actually can't see it in focus with this little crummy point and shoot camera. And actually let me zoom out. There we go. I can upload the picture if you want. But I have a gorgeous shot here. Um, I'll upload the thumbnail. But it's beautiful. Now this is only a five... Yeah, I know I should have set the uh, display for longer. But this is only a five minute setup, folks. And that's all this is. It's a five minute setup. This is a gorgeous shot. I mean, this is the sort of stuff you see in magazines. It took me five minutes to set up. So what do you think you could accomplish in 20 minutes? It's all about light manipulation. I'm using hardware LEDs back here, folks. You can buy them at Lowe's or Home Depot. They sell a two-pack strip, which the most amazing thing comes with a remote control device that lets you choose various colors, whether it flashes or strobes, and colors in between. And I'm using a two-part exposure. I'm exposing for the necessary backlight that I've got the LED strips behind the camera to expose it, and then I'll either uh, what I did at the last year actually I did a couple strobes like this with uh, not real strobes of course with a speed light but just some little uh, flash strobes to paint the picture like I wanted to expose where it said Nikon D700 there so I just smacked it there really quick and with my four second exposure I got it I made a beautiful shot and it only took me five minutes so a lot of people that are complaining about well you know you have to think of your camera in two different ways. You have to, th you have to first have the compositional skills, which obviously takes time. Some people innately have it, some people don't, but you could develop it. But the important thing is the light manipulation. Now you see this gorgeous shot? It's not that incredibly great, but I mean, it is a beautiful shot. It's a beautiful shot. And it's two-part. I use my red LEDs and I use my... Uh, surefire light here. Not everything has to be a strobe. Not everything has to be an expensive speed light. However, the surefire lights are actually quite expensive, but you know, do you catch my point? 
you have to think of your camera like a time machine and you have to think of well what could I do I have these great little LEDs that are on a pliable uh, silicone strip I can stick that behind a product and what I'll do is I'll uh, take a shot man it was much harder back in the days of film baby much harder because you had to write all this crap down I mean, it's so easy in a digital camera you hit the preview button then I've got the proper background exposure now all I know that I need to do is hey I've got the outline of what I want exposed properly let me show you on the camera here some of the uh, early test shots like there see now I knew I had the background properly illuminated so I got the definition of the camera the only thing I needed to do was just add in my flashlight doesn't have to be a strobe doesn't have to be a speed light it could be a regular flashlight baby you're painting with light this is no different than a painter's paintbrush the same thing with all the fiber optics that I told I was actually before I made this video I was going to use as I told you in prior video oh let me uh, you turn it on here I was going to actually paint the subject with uh, fiber optic hold on a second yeah I know the video is shaky you're gonna complain about the shaky video of course I was going to paint with fiber optics so I can actually stick it up here and actually paint my object with the fiber optics okay all of these things are painting devices I apologize for the shaky video but it's like six o'clock in the morning so just remember you can make beautiful photographs and so easy he's like well it's easy to you you've been doing it for years but it wasn't that hard I mean what I just showed you did you think that's that hard for you to replicate I mean do you I exposed for the background light and then I just want to stick in some fill right there and I found out that was a fill shot you're gonna to have to take a few experimental this is actually a sharp image it's just a point and shoot I'm doing this video and makes it look like the image isn't sharp but it actually is so you know lesson learned you know um, thank you for watching if you like this video you can drop me a buck or two or tell me to go jump off a cliff but uh, remember your cameras a time machine and remember it's not really that hard okay you have to learn and think about light the biggest mistake a lot of uh, amateur photographers make really is well, there's a lot of big mistakes is that they're not th they're thinking about the picture oh look at that pretty picture how can I grab well, if you can't if you can't capture it and it's not there then make it I mean this is beautiful for framing well, I could do it a lot better than this it's a five minute setup but you know it's good enough for framing I mean it's gorgeous I mean I've seen far worse shots than this in a magazine and it took me five minutes to set up so make it easy baby <clears throat> I like keeping things simple hey, everybody likes to complicate the piss out of photography Yeah, you can make it really complicated but why the hell do that life is short screw those people make it simple damn I'm about keeping it simple I got better things to do in my spare time like scratch my ass and eat Cheerios or you know uh, snarf down on some uh, snarf down on some uh, Scottish oh my god I friggin love Scottish shortbread cookies I gotta find the dirty bastard that invented those things and wring his neck he's made me so fat I love Scottish shortbread cookies <laughs> it's time for me to make some more coffee catch you later kitties bye